Hello everyone, I'm Joe Cronin and welcome to the Toss Up. I caught it, Riley. We are mixing things up today and discussing a topic that's going to set fire to the college sporting world come the fall of 2024. It's all things conference realignment today, so stick around and of course, buckle up because we got a great episode coming up on the Toss Up. May only be October, but the looming reality of college sports draws nearer, as in less than a year away, there will be teams in the Atlantic Coast Conference from California. Colorado is getting a warm-ish welcome back to the Big 12, and there will be a classic slugfest for years to come in the basketball world with Rutgers in UCLA. Joining me here today to discuss a pretty great panel is none other than my man jo Noel Ferry, Hayden Smith, and Josh Bodie. And gentlemen, just real quick, it seemed like the fall of the Pac-12 was a domino effect, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, it was just so fast. You, it was a blink of an eye type of thing. Yeah, uh, they, they imploded, and they're just gone. <laughs> Texas and Oklahoma leave two summers ago, and all of a sudden, the pac 12 is done two years later. Yeah, so that's really where everything started. Like you mentioned, Oklahoma, Texas joined the SEC. It makes noise all around, and there is going to be more change-up than we have ever seen in our lifetimes. There's always been change-up in the college sporting world with, you know, Maryland Rutgers joined the Big 12. There were some changes in the Big 12 in, in the last... 10, 15 years, but I guess, Noel, I'll go to you first. Who is your biggest winner on the grand scope of things from this new change? I mean, if you take a look at it, you got to think that Texas just comes away huge from this. Being able to join the SEC, be a part of that huge football culture when they already had a huge football culture, a, a big storied program like that, they're going to get plenty of money, plenty of attendance. They are huge winners. I mean, up until this past week, they looked like they were back, too. So yeah, no, yeah, they got exactly, so much hype exactly. around them, Hayden. I gotta say, it's the TV network. It's 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 the TV deals because that's what is that's the driving force for everything that we're seeing going on right now. ESPN, they're gonna be loaded once they get some of these schools from the SEC, the ACC, the Big Ten. Just got some deals with CBS, Fox. That's the big driving force, and they're the big winners. I mean, that was last summer when that $7 billion Fox deal with the Big Ten, and then you add the four powerhouse football programs that they're bringing in. TV money is going to be otherworldly in the college sporting world. Josh? I mean, I 100% agree with Hayden. It's the TV executives are pretty much one of, if not the only winner. And rivalries lost big, but there are two rivalries that I'd say won big, and that's the Holy War, that's Utah and BYU. The getting that one solidified is big. And then also making sure that we get back Texas, Texas A&M. That was one that I wish that they would have played each other when they were still in opposite conferences. But now that they're back together, that's a big winner. That kind of brings us to the losers of this whole thing. Where have things gone wrong? You bring up rivalries. I'll go to Hayden right away because I know he feels a little <laughs> different about what you yeah. said. Yeah, I mean, my, my losers are, are diehard sports fans. I mean, you, you lose a lot of really good rivalries. Do you go back to around 2014, whenever Maryland made the change from the ACC going to the Big Ten, they lost a rivalry with Virginia, a team that they had played consecutively for over 50 years, and they've barely played each other since. That's exactly what is happening with a bunch of these other great rivalries that we're losing, and I, I just hate to see those go away. And they had a they had big basketball rivalries yes. too, with like Duke, UNC, basically yeah. all the Carolina teams, they lost those as well. And Maryland's been a pretty solid basketball program, especially ever since they joined the Big Ten, even before that they won a championship back in 02. But back with the rivalries, like who knows what's at stake with, with the Civil War. That's Oregon, Oregon State. Noah, what about you? Was, who's the biggest loser? I think uh, for a lot of reasons, the biggest loser is some of these players, not necessarily just in football, but especially those smaller sports. You want to talk about travel time jet lag. I mean, you don't really have to worry about that too much in the U.S., but you know how you feel when you get off a four-hour flight. Yeah. Imagine having to go play a full game of football after that. I mean, it is going to be a big adjustment for some of these players to make. The travel miles are going to be crazy. Yeah, later in the episode, we will discuss some of how the other sports are getting affected because a lot of this realignment is circled with football. And that, that is something that I think we're all aware of. It's what the TV deals were more than aware of. But now we'll kind of transition. I want to talk about the conferences. The first couple, I'll just give each of you one, and then we'll harp in on some of the ones that made the bigger change. Noel, I'll go to you first with the Pac-12, or I guess what's left of it. We're going to call it the Tupac. I know, obviously, the California teams are called are gone, but it's fun to call them that. 
Great, great how they went from hero to zero. I mean, how can I give them any grade but an F? You know, I, you, you lose your conference. You, you have lost your conference and you don't know where it went. <laughs> but uh, overall, just seeing the collapse of, of a, a conference that just had such a storied history. Uh, you know, you look at USC, that's, that's an all-time great right there. It is, it's honestly sad, to be honest. But, you know, it, it has its ups and downs. So uh, an F. From me. F. Bill Walton has to be in tears. A <laughs> Champions no longer around. Hayden, you got the American Athletic Conference. This is a, they've kind of flown on their radar being a group of five, but you know, they lost some quality teams, especially in the football world. They had a team that made the college football playoff with Cincinnati that they lost along with Houston and UCF, but they brought in a ton of teams from Conference USA, especially. Where do you grade that their reloading ability? Yeah, so like you just said, they lost a lot of talent, but they also brought in some quality quality um, teams and quality conference teams. I mean, you'd bring in six from Conference USA, but I don't think that outweighs the teams that you lost. So I'm going to give them a C. Yeah, I think it will be tough. I mean, UTSA has made some noise here and there the past couple years. I think for them, it's going to be a five, yeah. six year total rebuild to see when the quality comes back. Josh, I'm giving you the SEC. There's not a ton to talk about, but I feel like the grade is going to be a little more promising for, for this conference. Yeah, I'll give them a B plus. I mean, I'm not going to give anyone an A because I think conference realignment stinks. No one <laughs> likes it other than like maybe a handful of people that get all the money. I'll give them a B plus because I think they came out the best. They get Texas and Oklahoma, which I think are big additions, and all of their states are still touching, which I like a lot. There's at least maybe a little bit of regionality. You can, I guess, make the argument that Austin, Texas is the South. I don't think you can make the argument that Norman, Oklahoma is the South, but I think it's close enough where I'll give the SEC the benefit of the doubt, give them a B-plus, the best grade that I'll give anyone. Like I mean, that. even with that, they still have teams like Mizzou. I mean, Vandy's not really south. Like, Tennessee is a southern state, yeah. but Vandy's not that far south. That's I, Nashville. I yeah. think of all the conferences that went through changes, the SEC did the best. They only added two teams. They didn't get rid of any teams. And the two teams they brought in from a football standpoint are some of the most storied programs of all time. Yeah, they're still one of the biggest powerhouses in all of college football, and I don't think that's even a question. Yeah, I mean, they kept the Red River. Uh, rivalry through conference play, which I think is big. Now, we transition. The last three conferences, I kind of want everyone to give their opinions. Noel, I'll go to you first. We're going to start with the ACC. This is They only added two teams, or three. They added three with uh, two from the Pac-12, and then SMU was the latest addition, which was kind of a, a last-ditch effort to make them relevant again. What's your grade for them? It's hard to really give them a grade because I think for them, it's what's to come in the future down the line. I think, you know, with Clemson, you know, kind of teetering that line, you, you're not really sure where they're going to go. For now, you know, Josh, you said it yourself. It's not like you can really give anyone a good grade, but, you know, maybe a, a C plus, a C type thing. I don't know. I mean, from a football standpoint, it's 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 tough picking. Yeah, I, I got to agree with Noel. I mean, there it's kind of an, an average transition for them. And you make a great point with potentially losing Clemson and FSU. Yeah. I mean, those are some of the best football programs in the entire country. And if you lose them, you're going to fall off the cliff. You, you still have a lot of great programs. I mean, you're seeing what Louisville's doing this year. That's absolutely outstanding. But beyond that, what you bring in, it, it, I got to say, it's just average. Give them a C. The biggest thing about the ACC is they're locked into a very long-term ESPN deal to 2036. And like you mentioned, Clemson, FSU, they've kind of voiced their concerns about wanting more money. And if those are, those are programs that will get the funding to possibly join a different conference. Obviously, don't want to speculate too much. Josh, ACC grade. I'm more of a harsh grader. I'm going to give them a D. Wow. Just barely wow. above an F. I would give them an F. But, I mean, their conference is still alive, unlike the Pac-12. So I'll give them a D. I think that the fits of SMU, Cal, and Stanford are terrible. I, I don't understand why they're traveling all the way across the country. They're not good at football. They're not good at basketball. I don't – or <laughs> men's basketball. Stanford's very good at women's basketball. But I, it doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, and it looks like Florida State's one foot out the door. So I give them a D. I mean, Cal and Stanford, they're really Olympic sports. That's where they – are going to generate. I mean, I was reading statistics about just how many athletes come from those two schools. I think with SMU, it was a last-ditch effort to make them relevant. They were so relevant back in the 80s. Had the, They were really the, the front runners of NIL and giving players money way long ago, 35-plus years ago, and got in trouble, big trouble for it. Had two seasons fully canceled because of it. And I guess 
We move on, next conference. It's a conference that added a ton of teams. They've added four this year. They're adding four next year, and they're losing two with Oklahoma and Texas. It's the Big 12. Noel, I want to start with you. The Big 12, they're adding so many teams, and they're keeping it relatively like smart with regionally. So where, where are you grading this conference moving uh, forward? You know, it is true they're, they're gaining some teams, but how can I give a good grade when for football when you've just lost Texas and Oklahoma? I mean, that out the door, that is just a substantial amount of followers, fans, money. For me, it, it is not going to be good. I'm, I'm looking more C minus D plus territory. I think there will be a, a few years of dippage, but I think they'll with the core that they have, it's going to start to build up as things start to settle in more once each team has played each other once, maybe twice. Yeah, Joe, you're completely correct. They bring in quality teams. Now, you, like you said, you lose Texas and Oklahoma. That's a huge loss. But some of these other schools that you bring in, especially Colorado this year, Coach Prime's one of the best coaches <laughs> in all of college football. I, I'm sorry, but it has to be said. But, I mean, beyond that, a lot of really quality uh, schools, a lot of quality teams. I, g I got to give them a B. I mean, yeah, Utah's always around that top 15 mark. Colorado has been put back on the map. They might not be quite at the spot they want to be, but they're, they're trending there, Josh. I give them a B minus. You have a conference. You added some more teams. You obviously lost the two biggest money makers, but I think the Big 12 is going to be sneakily one of the most entertaining conferences. They're not going to compete for national championships, I don't think. But I think they're going to play some entertaining games, B-. minus. Now, being at a Big Ten school, it's only fair that we end with the Big Ten. Just a few quick remarks, adding four West Coast teams. Four or Three of the four have been pretty powerhouse programs. UCLA has been on the come up as of lately. Josh, I'll go back to you. Grade the Big Ten. C-. minus. I don't like the fits. Uh, they're going to be fun games, I guess. But traveling across the country is, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. And I think it really hurts the small Big Ten teams, or not the small Big Ten teams, but the, the Big Ten teams that aren't good at football. I think like Indiana, Northwestern, uh, Illinois, some of those guys, I mean, I don't think they have any path to competing, not for a Big Ten championship for sure, but even trying to get back to the middle of the league is going to be tough. Especially with the fall of uh, the divisional play in the Big Ten, that's going to be very different, Hayden. Yeah, geologically, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, how in the world is a team like Rutgers going to be able to travel <laughs> all the way to Washington and then say the next week they're all the way back playing Maryland. How is that just going to be feasible? I, I don't like the fits, but as a money move, it, it was a no-brainer for the Big Ten. And again, that's all this is about. It's all about the green dollar signs. That's all this is about. So for the Big Ten, in that aspect, I got to give them a B. Yeah, I mean, it really just depends on how you look at it. There's nothing I can say that you guys haven't said so far. For the Big Ten, I think you're going to get some great matchups with some of the best football schools in the country, and that's going to be exciting to see. But, yeah, a lot of teams are going to get swallowed up. I'll, I'll give them a, a C-plus for that. Now, before we head to break, we've graded the crazy changes throughout the conference play. There are two teams left from the Pac-12, or like I said, the Tupac, <laughs> with Washington State and Oregon State. And they played each other this season and had, like, a bonding moment through that. And I guess, Noel, what do you think is happening for them in the future? Are they going independent for maybe a year, or do they try and find a conference? It, I think it would be hard for them to survive independently just because, you know, how much support do they have already uh, to go off of from that? I don't think that they would be financially, it, it wouldn't be feasible for them to be independent. So I think that we see them go somewhere else. Yeah, 100%. I think in all honesty, the Mountain West is probably the best place for them to go to. I, there's really not very many other conferences that they necessarily fit in with. And like you said, Noel, it's just, it's not possible for them to survive on their own. They're not, they're not a Notre Dame. They're not going to be able to do that. And they're not powerhouses by any means. They're doing pretty solid this year, but so is every other Pac-12 team because they're out for revenge, apparently. <laughs> yeah, that was what I was wondering. This seems like a vengeance year yeah. for them. Everyone's playing well, Josh. Yeah, I think they merge with the Mountain West, but I think the Mountain West goes to the Pac-12 and it becomes a Pac-14. You just take the whole Mountain West. They can move to the Pac-12 to join Oregon State and Washington State. But for me, it made me fa a fan of Oregon State and Washington State. I'm going to be pulling for them the next few years. Now, why not? I'm being totally unserious about my predictions. I think they play each other 12 times a year and crown a <laughs> champion based on that final wow. record but we will be right back from break to break down some basketball and some of the other sports don't go anywhere
with football being the driving force behind all the changes, it seems the plethora of athletic talent in college has been forgotten about, especially with this realignment. So I guess, Josh, I'll go to you first as we're welcomed back. What about basketball? Yeah, it seems like men's basketball and basketball in general is all of a sudden just like pushed to the back, which is crazy because it's such a huge college sport. But uh, I think the Big 12 comes out really good. They get Arizona. I think the Big 12 is going to be a great basketball conference. And I'm going to shout out the Big East. The Big East, <laughs> my personal favorite basketball conference, they're still the same. UConn's still in the Big East, and I really hope UConn does not leave the Big East. They've been threatening leaving, and it's because of the Division One football team that they possess. Hayden? You talk about um, how basketball has just kind of been pushed to the side. That is correct because, like I said earlier, football is the big money maker in the NCAA. Basketball, of course, they have March Madness. That's where they get most of their revenue from. But, I mean, with basketball, especially like the Big Ten, you create some new interesting rivalries that I'm actually very excited to see. Indiana, UCLA, uh, that's a game we haven't seen for over 20, 30 years. I, I can't wait until we see some of these rivalries. Once again, you lose a classic. There was something reported with uh, Mick Cronin was trying to figure something out to schedule games with Arizona. Shout out to the last name right there. But... <laughs> Obviously, it's just hard because the Pac-12 was a pretty solid and formidable conference and just to see everything go away with basketball. And yeah, I think right now you look at the Big 12, there's not really anybody else who, who's up there with them. The Big East obviously is great, but you, you can't forget about the Big 10 either. You know, grabbing USC, UCLA uh, is going to be big. And But for me, I, I think for sure, best basketball conference is Big 12 right now. Just seeing like matchups, Big 12 matchups of Arizona versus Houston. Those have been teams that are always on the map. They're always, you know, high seeds in the tournament in the last five years. And now they're going to be conference rivals or whatever we want to talk about. I want to talk about travel, though. It was mentioned earlier with football, but I want to talk about travel in, uh, in particular with some other sports like baseball, volleyball, sometimes men's soccer, no. What's at stake for some of these athletes? It, you're really just asking too much of the players at this point. It's one thing when you're playing one game a week consistently. No matter what, you're playing one game a week in football. You have a little bit of recovery time. But for some of these other sports, you know, you're going to be making these cross-country flights, sometimes cross-country road trips, and then having to come all the way back and play another conference game, potentially it is just not feasible for some of these athletes. And they're looking at this saying, where's the concern for us? I mean, look at like college baseball. It's hard to play four full years of college baseball and make your way to the pro unless you're in the top conference, which a lot of times is the SEC. So it's just, when are you going to find the times for classes and stuff like that? Yeah, no, you took the words right out of my mouth. I mean, it's just, how are they going to be able to do this? And especially some of the other sports like um, a, a softball or a baseball or a volleyball. Volleyball plays about 20 conference games throughout the season. How are you going to be able to make, in some cases, like you said, a bus ride f from Rutgers to Washington, like I said earlier? It, it's impossible, but some of these teams... They just, they can't afford a charter flight like that. It, it just, I, I can't wrap my head around it, Joe. I mean, is there the potential that maybe some sports start falling off? It, it, maybe in the Big Big Ten, Josh? It's it's probably way too early to, to say that. I really have no idea. But in terms of travel, I guess maybe the only solution is like maybe USC, UCLA, their volleyball teams like travel together to the Midwest. I don't know. It doesn't really make any sense to me in terms of travel. And I think it's completely brutal. Uh, for the student athletes as well. Well, gentlemen, there's not much more we can say except just wait and see because sooner or later, our world of college sports is going to be completely different. But that's going to wrap up this week's discussion. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at the Toss of 23 and at the Toss of IU, respectfully, as well as at IUSTV Sports on both platforms. Riley, I'm tossing it to you. Don't talk about Victor too much next week. We'll see you next time. Oh,